mentioned the words far right there and some of the people uh, in the comments are mentioning it already as well. And Sky News said this the other day that uh, they were talking about the surge of the far right in the context of the European elections. And they said the surge of the far right with a picture, a, a piece of video of Nigel Farage with a pint. And I said, this is a seriously unforgivable smear by, by Sly News. Ofcom will, of course, shrug their liberal shoulders. And I stand by that. And then you said, Alex, on, on Twitter, that the left have gone so far left that everything is is right or far right to them. You know, science or biological truth, that's far right. Countries having border controls, well, that's far right. I even ho heard, Alex, that uh, actually locking people up in jail is considered far right now if they've committed a crime. <laughs> Freedom of speech is far right. Wanting lower taxes is far right. Questioning the government is far right. Country having a right to defend itself. Well, that's far right. Capitalism, you know, lifting people out of poverty. That's far right. All of these things are far right. And then like clockwork, Dawn Butler, a Labour MP, she tweeted, we were all warned about the rise of the far right and incels. I don't know where incels came from, but I've heard this a few times, but I can't really get my head around it. Now, the attack on woke feeds into this dangerous rhetoric. The surge in support for the far right across Europe is a warning for us all. Farage and reform and some Tories should be nowhere near power. And I, I said, actually, far right means you believe in borders. Uh, racist means you reject anti-white bigotry. Transphobic means you accept biological sex. Islamophobic means you say no to religious sectarianism. The left has utterly debased the English language and every single ism and phobia in the English dictionary. And then I, in that, with that all in mind, right, the, these smears and this, this penchant for the use of the word far right. Yesterday, a, a member, an activist for Unison the Union well, in, from Chesterfield, and he looks like the, the sort of Jeremy Corbyn voting great unwashed. But he was basically, uh, he threw whatever it was, some form of missile at from a, a construction work bin at Nigel Farage on aboard his battle bus. And I had said that I, I said, I know it's something that Nigel's spoken about and he says he puts it to the back of his mind because he doesn't want to think about it. But I said, I think Sly News branding him far right and Guardian columnists like Owen Jones saying that it's art to throw things at him and MPs actually refusing to call it out in the same way that they would, dare I say, if it was Diane Abbott or Sadiq Khan who was having construction work thrown at him. And I said, if it was anyone else, this would be front page news. But there are two questions from that, I think, Eunice. I'll start with you. Uh, the, the, the fact that the far right smear, the left using this as a smear, and the attack on Farage, do you think that that's linked? And do you think, do you hold those people partly responsible, actually, for stoking up this, this resentment and this hatred directed towards Nigel Farage? Yes, so two points I'm going to make on that. The first point is that, of course, the mainstream media tries to paint Nigel Farage as a far-right person, so that way they can smear him, and that way they can make him and all his followers look like racists. And that's because they can't win on the issues. And that's the same thing, as I said, they do to Trump. They can't win on the issues, so they go after you in terms of character and character assassination. And then you have certain impressionable, uneducated people that take that seriously, and they throw milkshakes at him and they throw stones at him and God knows what else can happen in the future. The second thing I want to say about this is that in the past, if you, if you know the political spectrum, we have the left and the right, and then we have the libertarian and the authoritarian, right? And traditionally, it was more the conservatives that were more authoritarian, meaning that they wanted to impose control. They didn't really want freedom of speech. They didn't really want freedom of expression. So I'm, I am actually an old school liberal. I believe mm. in freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of expression. These are liberal values. And now I feel like it's switched a bit where the right is more libertarian and the left is more authoritarian. So it's went from this to this, mm -hmm. right? And 
any party that, and it's the globalist side, it's the left that tries to cancel you, it's the left that tries to force the vaccine, it's the left that tries to shove down the woke stuff down your throat. So they're extremely authoritarian in that aspect. They might be socialists, but they're extremely authoritarian. And in my heart, I'm a libertarian. And that's maybe one of the reasons I was more on the left in the past is that they were the ones that were, that were more libertarian. Now that's changed. So as I said, I feel like the left and the right doesn't make sense anymore. I, I really yeah. think it's the establishment and the mainstream media and the populists and the libertarians. Yeah. Uh, Alex, a, a couple of comments here. Uh, Chris says, racist, fascist, Nazi, bigot, they've all been overused until they've lost their real meaning, which is dangerous, actually, because if you, uh, we should actually be worried about there being genuine Nazis, right? And then having nothing to actually call them because the words have been so thoroughly debased. And then Steve says, yet it's the far left that are the most violent. Yeah. yeah, well, they're absolute. Those comments are absolutely spot on, aren't they? The term far right is used as a term of slander towards anybody that the establishment and the left disagree with. It's used to basically call you a Nazi without calling you a Nazi. Let's just be clear about the way that they use it and what their intentions are. Their intentions are to make you seem unelectable, to make you seem dangerous. But as Steve has just said, who are the ones who are being violent? You know, mm. in France, there were, after Marine Le Pen's election, in the villages that voted for her, there were people out there rioting and burning down parts of, and, and trashing the streets of those uh, Le Pen voting areas. There were attacks on you know, the AFD in Germany. There was, a, you know, the AFD politician was stabbed. That, you mm. know, Nigel Farage has stuff thrown at him. Who are the far right? Who are the people who are dangerous. Let's just have a look at the evidence, the facts. And of course, we all know the left and the far left, as I like to call them now, don't like facts. They bury their head in the sand. They pretend that the facts don't exist. And that, that's because the facts don't serve them well at all. I have not seen a single piece of evidence to tell me that any of the parties that have been voted for in Europe have had any violent history at all in modern times. You know, reform people you know people voting reform are just average british people who've had enough that don't want yeah. to vote conservative or labor anymore because they offer no change and they know that they lie to you those parties lie to your face every election they promise you to reduce migration they promise to br bring down your bills and they all do the opposite of that so yeah. you know to call ordinary folk far right is an absolute disgrace and we've got to start calling it out yeah, Bob says the left have rewritten what fascism means and become the new yeah. base of fascism. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I think I agree with that. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.